Welcome everybody. Praise the Lord. I am excited about being here today. It's a lot of things that the Lord has been dealing with me and has placed on my heart. There's a lot of people I believe that will be receptive to what the Lord is saying in this season on today. Many of you feel isolated. You feel alone in your struggles. You feel alone in your problems. You feel alone in your thinking. You feel as though like you're on an island, like people just don't get you and you reach out for help and the people that you thought would be there is not there. The people that you thought you could depend on is not there. The people that you thought loved you enough that they would come see about you, they're not calling, they're not visiting, they're not helping you in your situation. You have a lot of people that's talking about you, that's gossiping and, and, and scandalizing your name. You have people that it's just fraudulent when it comes down to it you know Jesus had the same similar problem just think about this for a minute Jesus never asked anyone in the earth to do anything for him one time he asked those that he had walked with for three and a half years those he had poured his everything into and ultimately those that he died for. He simply said, pray with me. And you know the story, if you don't, they fell asleep on him three times. This is a God who raised the dead, healed the sick, fed the poor, opened the eyes of the blind, opened the ears of the deaf, unloosed the tongue of the mute. This is a God who's no respect of persons, women that were divorced and lepers and people that were sent away and put in colonies that had no place in society. Those that other people excluded, God included. For we know the Bible says that Jesus was lounging in Simon the leper's house. Many people in scriptures were isolated. He felt alone, you know, Elijah felt alone and when Jezebel had threatened him and he was on the run and was on a juniper tree and wanted to die. Unfortunately, many of our young people are committing suicides at a high rate. Many of our young people are on drugs and going through serious addictions. Many of our young people are incarcerated in the juvenile and adult systems, male and female. Many of our people are self-medicating because they feel isolated. They feel alone. They feel as though people has given up on them. Whether it's due to their unemployment, whether it's due to their ethnicity, because uh, we know racism and bigotry is still big in America. And so, according to the environments that we live in, people live in urban areas and trailer parks and public housing and Section 8, and they just haven't have the opportunity to excel in their gift. They haven't been exalted or lifted in order to prosper. And so they feel isolated. They feel as though life is cruel, life is hard. And a lot of people have turned from God thinking that God is not there, thinking that God is not with them because, again, they feel isolated. So before I bring today's message, which is entitled, God has isolated you in order to insulate you with his purpose. I just want to pray for you for a minute today. Heavenly Father, I ask that your spirit reign supreme right now. I decree and declare that those who are sick feel your healing touch for you are Jehovah Rapha, the healer. You said by your stripes we are healed. I plead the blood over their lives through Christ Jesus through whom all spiritual blessings flow. Heavenly Father, decree and declare financial increase over seed sores. For your word says you'll give seed to the sower. You will give a word, instructions on what to do when your word should not come back void. It should accomplish the thing that it's set out to do. Heavenly Father, those that's unbelieving, that has weak faith, the man asked Jesus, help my unbelief. And in the book of Hosea, you said, I will heal your faithlessness. 
So, Heavenly Father, may you touch those who are struggling to believe this morning, for you have given all men a measure of faith. If they have faith the side of a mustard seed, the littlest seed of creation, but yet it reaps the biggest har harvest out of any herb in the planet. Which means no matter how small our faith is, if we put our trust in God, then it will reap the biggest harvest that you've ever seen. For there's nothing too hard or impossible with God. And so on today, Heavenly Father, may you forgive us of our sins, our transgressions, our trespasses, our iniquities, and our abominations, known and unknown. May you bless our parents and grandparents and children and grandchildren and stepchildren, our brothers and sisters, aunts and uncles, nieces and nephews and cousins. You said you would withhold no good thing from us, Heavenly Father, so receive that on today. Lord, thank you, and may your word resound. May you speak to me and through me. In this message, Heavenly Father, and broken hearts and broken marriages, I decree and declare and pronounce that they'll be mended right now, Lord. That they will see the things that they seen in each other when they first fell in love. Heavenly Father, and they receive your ministry, for you said you've given us a ministry of reconciliation. To be made friends again. For you are a God of love. You are not a God of divorce, which means a fallen away of faith. Heavenly Father, give them faith in you. Because ultimately, Lord, it is you who lives in us, your anointing, your power, the same power that rested and resided in Jesus, it lives within us. So, Heavenly Father, let us turn and seek your refuge and your strength and your restoration and your redemption as we honor you on today. We give you thanks and praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get right to this message. Um, if you turn with me to Genesis chapter 12 and verse 1 you see this is a, a scripture that is filled with revelatory knowledge again as God teaches you why you feel isolated this is going to bless you the Lord said to Abram remember his name was not Abraham yet because God could not transform him until he was called to be until he isolated him. That means he had to call him out of three situations. In order so he can again insulate him. Fill him with his purpose. I want you to catch that. God will isolate you. Put you alone. So that he can insulate you. Fill you with his purpose. That will bring transformation. Where he will go from Abram to Abraham. And his wife will go from Sarah to Sarah. Father of all nations. God has a reason for isolating him. The Lord said to Abram. Go from your country. Your people. And your father's household. To the land I will show you. God instructed. For Abram to leave three places. The first was leave your country. What that word country ensues in, 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 in is God is saying leave the environment that you in. Many of us are in uh, impoverished areas, are in housing projects, section 8 housing, bad areas. Not of any bad things we've done, not of because we uh, can't manage our money or because we don't want to do better. This is not the situation. Many people are in the environment that they were born in. Same thing, we were born in iniquity. Shaped by iniquity, born in sin. I'm sorry. We were born in sin and shaped by iniquity. But God has given us a way of escape, so he's saying you don't have to be shaped by it. The thing that you was born in. Yes, you was born in housing projects, but you don't have to be shaped by what happens in the projects. So young men has been born in situations where they're surrounded by gang violence and guns and, and drugs and people going to the penitentiary and being shot and stabbed and dying at the age of 16 and 18 and 20. So though you born in that environment, you don't have to be shaped by it. This is why men, we have to be mentors and leaders. And we have to guide these young men out of these situations. God has called us 
out from among them. So he's calling them out of an environment. Why? Because this environment is influential in Abram's thinking. God cannot insulate him with his purpose because his environment is full of idolaters. People who do not serve God. People who worship the moon. People who have different cultural beliefs and religious beliefs. And so he's surrounded by things that will hinder what God has in store for him. So God says, leave your country. Leave the environment that will hold you back. Many of us are in our situations because we won't leave. Sometimes you have to uproot and leave. And we have to trust God. So God said what? I will take you to a place where I will show you. He didn't tell him where to go. He didn't say, look, leave Ohio and go to Pittsburgh or leave Cleveland and go to Atlanta. See, a lot of us go to places where we're here. There's a lot of jobs, there's a lot of money, but we haven't consulted God. And so though them places may prosper for everybody else, you can go to that place and not be fruitful because you wasn't called or sent by God. God said a place that I will show you, which means you have to trust my leadership step by step and I will reveal to you. So the place where I'm taking you is not seen yet. He said, I will show you. So that means you have to trust him in his directions. The second place that he said to leave, he said, leave your father's house. See, a lot of times we, 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 we say that what's going on in this generation is because men don't have fathers. Uh, because so many has went to the penitentiary and been murdered or deadbeat dads or, or drug addicted or on a down low or off in the military somewhere and just bad examples of men, ungodly men. But here God instructs Abram to leave his father's house. Remember Cain and Abel didn't get messed up by sex, drugs, and alcohol. They got messed up by their dad, Adam. Adam sinned. Adam became bad leadership. And so this is what God is calling Abram out of his father's house because his father is bad leadership. His father cannot lead him to where God wants him to be as a father of all nations. His father is not equipped spiritually to lead his son. And so spiritually he's unfit. How many of us men are in situations that we're in because the first pistol we saw was from our dad. The first beer or wine that we seen was from our dad. The first time we seen a woman smacked around and abused, it was our father doing it. And so we emulated and took on them bad mannerisms of our father. If dad done it, then it must be okay. So many young boys growing up want to be like their father. So, you know, we grew up with cap guns and water guns and BB guns. And now we got real guns. And now we're going to the penitentiary receiving life and life without and death row. And all this stuff is going on. So a lot of times bad leadership comes from right in our own household. So God is calling him out from bad leadership. So again, to recap, one Come out from the environment that is detrimental to you. Two, come out of bad leadership that's not sown into you, thus saith the Lord. That's not planted into you the things of God. And the third thing, he said, come out from your people. People that influence you, your friends, people to give you advice. That's why he say walk not in the counsel of the ungodly. Because you have people that will give you bad advice. You have people, why are you always going out to that church all week? Why are you giving your money to that church? You ain't doing but getting that pastor rich. Why are you always doing this and doing that? Why you don't go out like you used to? We used to have fun. We used to hang out at the clubs. We used to do this. Now you didn't change. You didn't got brand new on us. So under peer pressure, people then abandoned and abort the seed that God is planting in them and kills their own destiny. Again, Jesus is alive 
and resurrected. But many of us has rolled a stone in front of Jesus. We have locked him in a grave in our thinking, in our behaviorisms. And so we can't receive the resurrected Jesus because we have placed the stone there by having a heart and heart, by disobedience, by not listening to his word, not believing in the resurrected Jesus. Still looking backwards to a 2,000 year Jesus. Well, the 2,000 year Jesus is not there. He died. That body was nailed to a cross. The cross is not the blessing. Wearing crosses around our neck, and I ain't knocking nobody who do, but I'm just letting you reminisce on this, be reflective of this. The blessing is not the cross. The Bible says, cursed is who who hangs on the cross. The curse of sin and death, Jesus took that on, on the cross. The blessing is the resurrection. See, that old dead body stayed there. Jesus was resurrected with an incorruptible body, the same ones we would receive. And so God called Abram out from people, people that influence you to make bad choices, people to call you early in the morning, man, what you into? What's going on, man? Yeah, man, I got a cold one, man. Come on over, man. Let's smoke one, man, and, 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 and watch the game. Or Come on, man, let's do this, man. You know, let's go double date, man. Let's go to this club, man. Let's go to the strip club. Man, I know these girls, man. You know, you just take this drink and smoke, man. Take this x pill or something. They do anything you want them to do. See, God calling him out from among the country, a bad environment, his father, bad leadership, and people, bad influences, peer pressure. Why? Because God said, I will make you a great nation. That word nation is ethos. God says, I will give you influence over people in such a way that their lives will change. So Abraham is called the father of faith. If you will go to the genealogy in Matthews of Jesus, it does not start with Adam. For again, Adam failed in his leadership of a nation. And he listened to a voice other than God's and led mankind down the wrong path. And so we were born in sin. But Jesus restored us and redeemed us. And through him we live again. And so when you look at the genealogy in Matthews, it starts with Abraham and not Adam. Because now everyone born again must be born again through faith. So Abraham being a father of many nations, ethos, peoples. So God has isolated you in order to insulate you with a purpose to influence people, to speak the gospel to people, which is bring salvation. And as I was talking to my wife yesterday, I showed her in the original language that salvation means Yahshua, the name of Jesus Christ. It also means prosperity. It means health. It means wholeness. It means deliverance. And it means to be saved. And so this is why God has isolated you to insulate you. If you look at all the great men that were used in the Bible, all of them were called in isolation. Dave, David was called from shepherd and sheep and crowned king. He was in isolation when he killed the lion and the bear. We look at Paul. Paul was blinded on the road of Damascus. Or Damascus. And God said, why persecute of me? And God then filled him with his purpose. We look at Moses. Moses was on a mountain by himself when the Burning, bishop, burning bush appeared and the angel spoke to him through the bush. And then when he learned his attention, God showed up and said, this is holy ground. Take your sandals off. When we look at Peter and them, they were isolated by themselves fishing in different places. And Jesus came and said, follow me. When we look at all these great men, Noah, by himself, when God commissioned them. Because when you're around crowds, when you're around bad influences, when you're around family members who don't believe what you believe, their influence is heavy on you because they're all you know. 
You grew up in that household. You grew up in that city. You went to that school. But God says, if you want to receive this elevation, this great place where I'm taking you, you have to leave and come out from among them and listen to my voice where I'm leading you. And the problem with those that God delivered out of bondage, they never saw the promised land because they wouldn't trust in a different type of leadership. They'd rather return back to bondage to eat lentils and garlic and be comfortable with their leader because they knew what to respect. But to follow God, it took a different type of belief in leadership. And they didn't want to have that. So they murmured and complained and wanted to stone Moses and never did, even though God sent the manna from heaven and part of the Red Sea and their clothes never wore out and he gave them manna and, you know, gave them quail, gave them water from rocks and led them by clouds in the day and fire by night. But yet they still never believed because they didn't want to leave that environment. We know that in the story of Lot, his wife, God said, come out of Sodom and Gomorrah and don't look back. But yet she looked back, missing the pleasures of the flesh that Sodom and Gomorrah offered. And so many of us, instead of looking forward to what God has in store for us, we cling on to things that we've done in the past, things that we're familiar with, because now we don't have to trust God to provide for us. We trust in our own abilities to hustle. We trust in the people we know to give us a job or to help us out. Or if things go bad, I can go sleep on their couch or borrow their car. Or if I get lonely, I can always go back to him or her that I have slept with before to deal with this lust issue. And so God is calling us out. And so on today, I just want to encourage you that if you feel isolated, it's God isolating you to insulate you with his purpose. You're not alone. God has sent the comforter, the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth to live inside you and to speak to you and to give you a thus saith the word. Psalms 119 and 130 says the entrance of the word giveth light and give understanding even to the simple. It is the truth that has set you free. What is thy truth? Thy word is true. John 17 and 17. So God will always give you a word and he's leading to a place where he shall show you. So even if you can't see it, just trust God for he says, I know the plans are you. Jeremiah 29 and 11 are good and not evil. You have an expected end. So trust God on today. He is leading you. So that's why you're in isolation because he is insulating his purpose. He's filling you. He's filling you with who he is. With his wisdom, with his knowledge, with his fruits, with his gifts. As David said, bless the Lord, all my soul. Bless the Lord, all my soul. And all that is what? Within me. And forget none of his benefits. For he heals thy iniquities. Heal thy, forgive thy iniquities and heal thy diseases. So just think about that. We serve a God who forgives what's wrong with you. And heals what's wrong in you. So God bless you on today. This is Minister T.L. Hughes saying, I love you. Happy Sabbath. And may God be with you. Amen.